Hi, this is Vivek and in this particular video, we are going to learn this awesome technique called dynamic connectivity, which is one of those techniques which when I first time learned had officially blown my mind, right? And this is one of those topics that is a little hard, like uh, it is not really like something that comes at a medium level, it is generally the differentiating problem for somebody who is winning a contest. So if you are someone who has not gone through topics like graphs, DSUs and segment trees as of now, maybe you can skip this particular video and then come back once you learn this. But for somebody who has already learned these and like it's let's say like 1600 plus on CF, this would be like a super awesome technique to learn about and you would as soon as you learn the idea and you understand the core understand like underlying things that is working and how it's working you would be able to immediately say that uh, it's a super awesome technique right so let's get into this let's understand how to solve dynamic connectivity the problem that we have at our hand, hand is uh, you have graph of n nodes right there is a n sized node n uh, node graph and you have let's say some m edges initially present uh, it can and cannot be present as well and you have given Q queries, which is add a edge, remove a edge and query the number of components and you have to support these offline, right? So offline means you have all the queries together with you and then you have to report all the answers together. Now, all of the things like number of edges, nodes and queries is up to 10 to the power 5, which means recomputing the graph after every addition is not possible. So you cannot rerun like something like DFS, BFS every time and find out the component. And uh, like there is some nuances that goes into it, which makes it a little hard. So let's try to like run it on a sample. So let's say you have the first question mark over here. So you have how many number of components? You have one, two, three. So you have three number of components over here, right? Then you add the edge two to four. So you add this. How many components now? You have uh, one and then two. So you have two components. Then uh, you add four to three, you add one to two, two to one, that's the same thing. Uh, and then you remove one, two, three. So now how many components you have this one component which is all connected so you have answer as one. So this is what we are trying to find out the number of components that is there at the current time right and as you can see that something that gets removed doesn't necessarily remove a component directly because some new formed path might still make it connected right. So that's what makes it a little hard and if you think about it and if you don't know how to solve this maybe this will come out to be really a new idea. Uh, there are like multiple different like versions to the solution of this. There is like a uh, linker tree version which supports online type 2. Then you have uh, like uh, again uh, like square root decomposition based idea. But today we're going to learn something that is based on this DSUs plus segmentary uh, rollbacks, right? Okay, so what exactly goes in solving this particular problem? I'm not going to wait for you to think about the solution because I feel uh, the first time you're learning this, um, you would not be able to know the idea directly. So it's it's first time when you learn it and then you can think about other problems in, in a similar way. I have solved similar problems with, say, let's say with something called a ZOR space on segmentary and like some data structure rolling back after you go into some nodes and stuff like that. So this idea is very, very like reusable. But the first time you're learning, I don't think somebody can directly reduce this on the go. If you can, then again, that's up to you. I mean, then you are like already super awesome. But for the people like me who are learning these techniques, the first thing that you have to do is conversion of this particular process into range events. What exactly are we, are we kind of dealing with over here? So there are these queries, right? Each query either like takes and finds out some question or it changes the configuration of graph. So there is this initial graph which is present over here, right? After that, there is a query happening, then some addition happening, then some query happening, then some addition happening and so on, right? After each uh, query given to you, right? Something might change about the graph, right? So I can say my graph is at configuration zero over here. Then this is, so I will say configuration zero, configuration one, configuration two, configuration three. After every query, there is a new configuration of the graph. It might or might not be same as the previous one, but that's all there is, right? Five, C6, and then at the end, there is C7, right? And uh, like, on this, so th this query happens on this configuration. This query happens on this configuration, right? That's how it's working, okay? So what we are trying to convert this into is like there is a co like a configuration C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, right? Now if you see that there is a configuration that is there for graphs, right? And there are some edges that is changing its presence, right? Something can pop up in some configuration and then disappear after some configurations, right? But it will always be a range because see, this edge that was there from one to three, right? It was present from configuration zero. So it will start from configuration zero, right? It will all the way start before configuration zero and it will be present 
टिल कॉन्फ़िगरेशन फाइव बट आफ्टर दैट इट विल गेट रिमूव राइट सो टिल कॉन्फ़िगरेशन फाइव इट विल बी प्रेजेंट बट आफ्टर दैट इट विल बी रिमूव राइट सिमिलरली थिंक अबाउट समथिंग एल्स थिंक अबाउट दिस लाइक देर इज एन एज विच इज गोइंग टू बी एडेड एट सम प्लेस राइट फोर कॉमा थ्री फोर टू थ्री सो फोर सो बिफोर दैट द फोर थ्री एज वॉज नॉट प्रेजेंट सो टिल सी थ्री इट वॉज नॉट प्रेजेंट बट फ्रॉम सी फोर ऑनवर्ड्स दैट एज इज प्रेजेंट and it is going to be present till the very end because nobody removed it off right there could be some edge that might be present like this like in between two con between two configurations but in this case there is nothing such like that this edge that is getting added over here will be present from c5 onwards till c7 because nobody removed it off right this edge over here is something that will get started from c2 because after c1 you process this edge and then you get a configuration c2 so include inclusive of c2 everything till c7 will have this edge right so now you can see that let's terminology them this is edge 1 this is edge 2 this is edge 3 this is edge 4 right now this is the configurations i can simply say edge 1 is active in configuration 0 to configuration 5 edge 2 over here is present from configuration 2 to configuration 7 edge 3 is kind of present over here from configuration 4 edge 3 and this is edge 4 right this is how they are present so each edge has a range in which it's active and suppose we have to find out for a particular configuration what is the num what is the component so it's like if you make a line over here right whichever edges are getting hit e3 e2 e1 you can see that when you are at configuration 4 uh you have not removed 1 3 you have added 4 3 and you have added 2 4 so these three edges are active and these edges are not active so now what we have converted the problem into is at every configuration you know which is active which is not right and you have to find out uh, okay out of the things that are active what will be the number of components that we get right so this is the first conversion that from this problem of graphs and stuff we converted the presence of edge into a range over configurations this is the first conversion that you have to understand that these are like just time stamps where the configuration is there and you would have a uh, certain uh, like uh, like let's say Changes happening over intervals that some edge is present in this interval, something like this. So this is a transformation of problem essentially. Uh, what about these queries? Like the edges that are getting added and subtracted, you can kind of find out in which interval it's present, right? Uh, for queries, like let's say you add, you get a query over here. What it's asking is like number of components in C2, right? So if you can find out the number of components at C2, that is the answer for query that happens over here, right? So that's how you can also answer queries if you can find out at each. configuration what is the number of components right that's what we are trying to do at each configuration we will try to find out what is the number of components right in this whole conversion conversion okay great so i'm going to now like kind of go to the next idea which is using dsu with rollback what is dsu with rollback so if you have not seen videos on my channel i have created a four video series on dsus which like covers the basic dsu but again after that there is three more ideas on dsu like covering dsu with rollback as well the idea is in dsus you you use uh, two things which is path compression and rank compression right and essentially what you can do is you can kind of take uh, like chains over here like dsus look something like this right and you can maybe add an edge you can add a link between two things like you can set the parent for a node over here and then if you want to revert back the last move which is called as rollback right whatever you added last whatever merge you merge you did in the last move if you want to revert that you can do that very efficiently in dsu s2 right that is the idea of dsu with rollback so in that what we do is we keep the we don't do the path compression and we do the rank compression only right in that case it's like the smaller one getting added like this and when you have to revert just remove this link set its parent again to let's say itself something like this right so that is like reverting the operation of like setting this right so if you just use rank compression and not use use path compression uh, the complexity remains like every operation merge and find becomes order log n right which is fine right if you use both of them you have order ockerman function of n right that is how the complexities work so Uh, individually each one of them gives you order log n if you use both of them it's ockerman function of n but since we are using only rank compression when you are using rollback and not path compression we are going to be uh, getting a order log n complexity with adding some edge and then reverting it back note that we cannot remove any edge it has to be the last edge that you added to the structure but still that's good right that is something we can do so that is something that dsu with rollback is supporting for you that you have a graph right you have let's say a graph 
So if you get an edge, you can connect them and then you can also maintain in the DSU the number of components that initially the count was n. As soon as the merge happens successfully, which means there is a parent change, you can decrease this with one. And then we to revert back this, you increase it by one, like you convert it back to n, something like that. So you can maintain that, like uh, the number of components using in a DSU with only merges and single reverts, the last rollbacks, right? So that is something that is possible, okay? Don't worry, I'm gonna explain that in the code too. Uh, this is a fairly difficult problem, so I will explain the coding part of this, what, what the code that I wrote um, like many years ago, but I'm going to try and explain you guys the idea too. And once you'll see that, you will be able to clearly see how this works. If you have not learned this idea, please go back and see the DSU series that has all these interesting ideas on DSUs that you can use in some, some particular problem, right? Now, the third main idea is DFS on a segmentary of events, right? The, the, we, we created the configuration chain and then we had DF, we will do DFS on that particular configuration segmentary. This is the most beautiful idea of this problem. And I, f I think I cannot really like structure, structure it up without showing you an example. So let's kind of solve this problem now with all these three core actions, core ideas in action, right? So uh, remember what we did, we uh, say that there is like from zero till seven, this is six, this is five, four, three, two, one, right? There is these things over here. And uh, you can say that this first edge, this is E1, this is E2, this is E3, this is E, uh, this is E4, right? This is E1 only, but getting removed now. Let's say the same edge comes again, you will mark it as E5, uh, E5, right? That is not a problem. That those, those things can be handled separately. I'm not talking about edge cases in this problem though, right? You can handle those things while implementing things. So what we have now is you have C, uh, C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, right? Now you build a segmentary on top of this, which is essentially uh, for configuration one, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The segmentary works in this way, right? The very, very standard segmentary kind of uh, setup. Right? A very, very standard segmentary uh, where you have 0 to 3, 4 to 7, right? Now, remember each edge has an interval, right? E1 has an interval from 0 to, it got removed after 5, so it will be active till C5, right? You can see that uh, this edge is active from configuration 2 to configuration 7. Next edge is active from configuration four to configuration seven and so on, right? Uh, I'm gonna just like use a different color from configuration four till configuration seven. This is uh, nothing but E3, this is E2, this is E1, and then there is another one which is at the very, very end, which is uh, the E4, which is plus two one, which is going to be active from C5 till. Let's use another color for this one. From, this is E4, right? This is active in this range, C5, C6, C7. It's only active in this, 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 right? Okay, so now we have these ranges in which these edges are present. So now we use the property of segmentary that any range can be broken down into login nodes. So E1 is present in these nodes, right? In these configurations. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put E1 in this node and this node. Now you can see that when you have E1 on this and on this, like this edge over here in these two nodes, what it's essentially saying is that in this, in the, no, uh, leaf level nodes that is there in this subtree, E1 will be active, in this it will be active. So it's like adding this range on a segmentary, very standard segmentary operation, right? That you put this edge over here so that it can be used directly from this. Next you have, let's say uh, E2, which is from C2 to C7. So I'm gonna add uh, E2 and E2, right? Then I'm, I need to add E5, E3, which is from C4 to C7. So E3 will be active on, in this node. Like it's, it's gonna propagate downwards, right? I mean, we are not gonna propagate it downwards, but it essentially covers all the things that is downwards in the leaf side on that node, right? Then you have E4, it will be covered, it will be covered using these two nodes. So note that every edge you are putting on login number of nodes. That's the property of segmentary. Any range can be broken down into login number of nodes, right? Now, why did we do all of these things? Now think about any particular configuration, right? If you take, if you start from the uh, root node and just traverse like this, you can see that E1 and E2 gets hit in the path. 
isn't those two edges the only thing that is active at C3, right? Think about it again. Let's say we go through this path, okay? We are at this node. E2, E3, E1, E4, all of them are active at this particular configuration, right? Let's go through uh, some other path. Let's say this path. You can see that E2, E3, E4 is active in this. E1 got closed off, right? So now the path from root to leaf for any particular configuration will, will have the edges in its uh, like parent nodes, wherever relevant in only one of the nodes, whichever edges are active and that configuration. So now if we can somehow make a traversal down to the leaf from the starting point uh, for any particular node, we would be done. But the problem with that is we are uh, like also dealing with this problem of having multiple nodes in same particular path, right? We cannot start from this and just go down and then again go down and something like this. Why? Because think about this. When you have this E1, right? Uh, like you could have like a lot of edges in the, in the same node. So going through this multiple times might give you a TLE, right? Like you will have to add all those edges every time. So that's not the best way. The best way going forward is to do a DFS on this. So you start from over here and you keep a DSU, okay? Which is gonna maintain the number of connected components. You come over here, you see that E1 is over here, so you activate E1. Now you go on this side, nothing gets activated, nothing gets activated. So when you reach over here, you can see that only E1 is active, right? So at C0, you have a DSU with E1 active. You have merged E1, you have added E1. So you find out the answer, it will give you three, right? Then you go back, you go this side, nothing changes. This will also be three, number of components. Come go back, go this side, come traverse this side, you see E2. So before going down, you have to activate E2. So now DSU has E1, E2. So if I have to, like DSU is gonna maintain this graph over here, the E2 is now active, right? So now you again uh, go down now, like you go this side, you see that nothing gets activated at this node. So you tell that E1 and E2 is active, find out the number of components, DSU is maintaining this. So you remember E1 got added, then E2 got added. Now you have this configuration in DSU. So you can find out the number of components is two now in, from DSU, that number of merges that has happened, that is N minus that, okay? Now when you go back from this, you side this side, this are also ans answer is two. Then you go back. Before leaving this node, you have to turn off E2 because E2 was active inside the subtree over here, right? So before you leave this, you have to turn off E2. Note that the way we traverse this, E2 was added, then everything got added and removed. When you're going back, E2 is there at the like, as the last added edge. So you can remove E2 using a rollback, right? So in the DSU, we can roll back this and that is going to like kind of convert it to a very, very simple thing that uh, I'm gonna like kind of get, uh, I'm gonna remove, erase this off. So I'm gonna remove E2 directly when you come back. So you are again over here at this node, but now E2 is removed, right? That's the basic idea. Now, when you go back from this side, again, E2, E1 is getting removed now. So you have to remove E1 from the, from the whole DSU. So now my graph looks like this, and this is where you are. Then you again start reversing this side. You see E2, E3. So you push E2, E3, and you activate E2. E2 was nothing but 2, 4. So you activate this, and then E3 is 4, 5. So, uh, sorry, uh, 4, 3. So you activate this, right? Then you go this side and you see E1. So E1 is active, which means you activate this again. E1 is active now. And then you go this side, you see that you have, you nothing changes and then you reach the leaf node. So you find out the answer. See, these three are active. You have the DSU maintained, answer is one. Then you come back, you go this side, you see E4. E4 now gets activated. E4 also gets activated, right? This is like kind of a stack that we are maintaining so that only the last edge that was added will get removed. So it's very simple to maintain that. Now over here also the answer is one. Then you, when you go back from this, E4 needs to get deactivated. So you remove the last element from stack and that also converts, that also erases, erases it from the DSU. E4 was nothing but uh, one to two. So this edge will get removed. Then you, when you go back from this, see E1 get, will get removed, right? Over here E1 was there. So E1 will get removed and uh, you will get this much, right? Then you go this side, and E4 needs to get inserted back. E4 was nothing but 2, 1. So this gets inserted. You go this side and it's like uh, one component still and you come back, you go this side, it's one component still and then you revert everything back. So the graph is at the end going to be like an empty thing. But now you can see that at every configuration you have found out what is the number of components that is there at that point, right? So this is the main idea that goes in this particular problem that you have a segmentary, right? Where 
for every event that is there, that is like active for a range where the edge is active, you put in the login nodes on the segmentary, right? So every node is present in login number of nodes. Now what you do is you do a single traversal. You do a DFS on this segmentary. Note that segmentary has order n number of nodes given n configurations, right? 4n maximum uh, is what we generally create. Uh, in, like on a theoretical basis, it should be 2n. Uh, you can use 2n always, but 4n is the maximum. It's order n. So in each, so we know that we are going to traverse these nodes. During that process, we are going to activate each edge present in a node once and deactivate it once. So it's like uh, merge and then roll back, right? Then we're going to like kind of traverse whole thing. And then whenever we reach to the leaf, we're going to get the answer, right? So that's the whole process. That's the whole idea. And when you fully understand this, the time complexity is the main thing that you have to deduce out of this. So very simply for the DFS part, you have order n, right? Now for each edge, right? For each edge, you have to traverse, you have to activate it in login number of nodes and deactivate it also in login number of nodes. So that's into login, right? And then since you're maintaining a DSU to like merge, so this is like each, how many active activate or deactivate event, right? And then you have to, for each activate and deactivate event, you have to pay a cost of login from the uh, DSU. So there is a N log square N kind of a complexity over here. So that's the next question which I put up over here, which is what is time complexity? So this solution that we have over here is N log square N. But still 10 to power five, this will pass, right? So this is the main idea. The main idea was over here that you have a DSU maintained and you're alongside that DSU structure, you're traversing on the tree and based on the events that is coming out in the node that is going to be active throughout the subtree in all the leaf level configurations, you activate it, go down, complete all the configurations. And when you come out of that particular node, you're going to turn it off back. And with DSU where rollbacks are possible, this is something we can do in very efficient way. So that's the whole idea. In the next part, I'm going to explain you like a little bit by going through my code and how you can implement this neatly. But again, uh, if you want, this is something that is a good exercise. I have linked down a problem to kind of code below uh, in the descriptions. Go through that particular problem, code this up. It will be a very good coding exercise. But again, if you want to stick around and like see a little bit on how I implemented this uh, back very <laughs> two, three years back. So I'm going to go through that code itself and explain you some of my ideas on how you can implement this neatly, right? So let's move into that particular section. Okay, so if you search for dynamic connectivity, the best blog that you will get is this one. And this is the place where I learned it from. Uh, essentially, like there is this comment which is which describes the idea that we talked about. But I think uh, for somebody who is learning for the first time, this is like not that use, like friendly, right? So um, like I think once you see the video, it, it should be fairly straightforward to understand what these is talking about. And there is this really good training contest that you can kind of attempt, which is this one. And I'm gonna kind of explain my code to this connect and disconnects problem. Though I will not link the code in, in the description. I will encourage you guys to maybe see the video and understand things and then code it on your own because then only you're gonna retain the idea for a very long time. Also, you can see other submission on this particular problem. So that's never a problem, right? So let's get into the code part. So over here, we're gonna just quickly go through some like first top level stuff. Like there is this DSU with rollback possibility where I maintain their parent and ranks for rank compression, very simple. But essentially I also maintain a stack, which is which edges to revert, right? So uh, essentially when you revert back, rank of something decreases, right? And the parent of something gets changed. So that's what I maintain in stack. So when I reverting it back, the stack kind of pops back. Uh, I'm gonna explain that when, when, we, when I go through the code, but just understand high level first, and then we're gonna deep dive. Uh, we have a segmentary, very simple. Each segmentary node is contains an edge that between which edge you are adding, right? So, and then we do a DFS on this on this segmentary, right? Uh, IDLR standard DFS on, on a segmentary structure. So you have N nodes and K uh, like queries. So you build a, like a normal like DSU over here. Current union find, uh, you initialize it with N uh, possibilities. And then you have a mapping that which one got active and deactivated. So, and initially mem set, uh, it's just empty queries. Then you have a bunch of queries coming in like AB, normalize that and then put it into map that it, it, it got added at I. And if you have a particular like A to B, which is uh, present, right? Which is coming in. If this edge is coming in, then we have to update 
that from this from whatever whatever place it was last added at right till this particular point we have to update that this edge is present after that it will not be present right and if it is not present if it is present then remove it off because now from now on this edge is no longer available and then we just put some queries and stuff so this is just an old implementation you can write your own but the main idea i want to talk about is how do you update stuff so for every like thing that is still present at the end you have to update it from the range where it is present till the very end k right all queries k queries and then you build a like there are k queries so 0 to k configuration 0 to configuration k so all of these them are present from this to add all the end configuration and then you dfs on it right uh, finally you sort it sort the answers based on offline query id and then report them up right that's a very very standard offlining technique now when you dfs uh, you're gonna go through the current node you go through all of the edges that are so let's let's kind of go through this addition where you add the edge in the segmentary so you basically go through all the in this range l to lq to rq you have to add the edge so you go to any node which is minimally covering the segment and then you add the edge in that uh, node and then directly return so that you don't go inside the subtree because every node has that every final configuration in that leaves have that very standard segmentary code and then dfs is basically you go through the you grow from the start right you maintain previous is nothing but when you enter this node how many like edges have you currently there in the in your current union find so it's like the position in stack right then you go ahead and add all the edges that is getting activated over here right if it's a leaf node then finally like print out any answer if it's required right i've just like kind of done it that way uh, you can find it for all then and then go through queries and report the answer that's also another way and then if it's not the leaf then uh, divide on both the sides and then find the answer like it's a standard dfs and before you return back from this please make sure that whatever you have like the previous configuration was over here so roll back to this previous configuration whatever was so all those edges that you added remove them back from the dfs in the same order you added so that's the rollback operation right and this is the basic dfs that we talked about in rollback you can see uh, what i did was when i merge right so the parent and rank gets changed right when you merge something uh, and this is rank by size essentially so i just keep a stack that you merged parent of y was x so you merge y into x right or else you merge x into y based on rank right so when you also revert you have to make sure that you change the parent and this rank accordingly so that things don't get, go, get uh, problematic and then you also uh, like change back the number of components that is there when you merge see i'm decreasing the component whenever a merge is successful if they're not in the same component then the component size decreases so you can maintain the number of components and then you have to revert that that back to whatever it, it was previous to that at this current size of stack this was the component that's what i'm maintaining you can revert it back to that and then you like remove it from the stack and go back so it's like revert it's the operation so that's how you can code this up you can uh, write a bunch of codes on your own see how you can write this up play around with the code and see this is a very good exercise to code as well and while you are code you will understand each and every nuance that we talked about but a very interesting idea if you know all these topics definitely go ahead and code this up and that will be all from my side in this video definitely let me know in the comments what more small topic that i can pick up because as i have said in previous videos too i'm trying to take up really good interesting ideas that i feel should be covered in in a video neatly and uh, if you suggest me really good ideas, most probably I'm going to take that up in the next video because this was something that somebody suggested me on LinkedIn, right? So I'm going to take this up. Uh, maybe more ideas which have been flowing up on YouTube too. They are also in queue, but again, uh, it depends upon how much time is available, right? So we'll keep creating more and more content, but from your side, you can support making more such contents with a like and subscribe. If you don't like some video at any point, I'm going to always unsubscribe. So definitely subscribe to the channel. You will keep only learn new things. And that will be all from my side in this video. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.